Now, I know my audience, you guys, are aspiring mechanical engineers or current mechanical engineers, and you've probably discovered that YouTube is literally flooded with videos titled A Day in the Life of a Software Engineer, and there's virtually none for mechanical engineers. I made a video in the past as a parody of what it's like to work from home as a mechanical engineer, and a video of an actual day in the life of a mechanical engineer that I had to take down from my channel due to to confidentiality related reasons. Watching all of these a day in the life of a software engineer videos is honestly pretty sad. All I see is just engineers eating, typing, eating, joining a meeting, and eating. But the more I think about it, a day in the life of a mechanical engineer isn't far from that of a software engineer. And the one biggest thing that they have in common is this. They're all taking place inside, whether it's at a computer in a lab or shop floor or test facility. That's the first realization that I want you to make. As a mechanical engineer, you're gonna be sitting inside in front of a computer the majority of the time, and I wanna emphasize the word majority. Now, personally, I don't see that being the most suitable for humans. I just don't think that we were made to be sitting at a desk for eight hours a day. It's actually quite detrimental to our health if I were to be brutally honest. So just right out of the gate, if that doesn't seem like something that's too attractive to you, then you might want to take a deeper look into the potential career path that you're currently looking at as a mechanical engineer. And that's what this video is about, revealing the hard truths and challenges of being a mechanical engineer and what it takes and not just the high life. I'll also be sharing a life-changing tool with you guys, Jiga.io, that has transformed the way I design and make parts and that you absolutely need to know as a mechanical engineer. So let's get started. All the day in the life of an engineer videos that you see on YouTube, whether it's mechanical, electrical, or software, they're sharing their experiences, but that is a biased point of view. They're entertainers. They want you to watch the entire video. Just think about it. It's much easier to watch a two hour long movie that's been directed, filmed, edited, and has a good plot rather than sitting down and watching a two hour long lecture. Can we agree on that? The main goal of these videos, whether they're helping you out or educating you, is to keep you entertained so you forget about the outside world and watch as much of the video as humanly possible. So don't watch these videos and think that's exactly how it is because you can't see into the minds of these engineers. They aren't just aimlessly moving their mouse around. They're deep in thought trying to figure out solutions to a design problem and running simulations and implementing that solution in their designs. And then in their meetings, they're not just chatting or fooling around with coworkers. They're being told that their entire week or possibly month of work that they did is worthless because the executive team decided to go another route and they don't want the product feature implemented anymore. Or you're being told by the customer that your design proposal is trash and now you have to redo it and those meetings are never fun. But hey, you know, it's not all bad. Sometimes you're just shooting the breeze with coworkers and discussing what to do next. Now, plenty of the things that I mentioned in this video may be seen as negative or whatever. It may appear that I'm trying to discourage some of you from becoming a mechanical engineer. No. I'm just trying to show you the reality of what it's like to be a mechanical engineer. Not sugarcoat anything and not just show you the good side of the job. Absolutely none of you deserve to spend four years of your life on a degree, drop tons of money on it, and then end up having regrets as a mechanical engineer simply because no one told you about the quote unquote bad things about the job. You need to understand that in any job, especially this job, there is a give and a take, good and bad. Now this brings us to one of the biggest points of this video and that is working as a professional mechanical engineer means working for someone else's company, which means working on someone else's idea and product. You may love the idea, you may love working on that smartphone or car, but you never have the final say on what features will be implemented or what the product will look like or where the product will be in five years. For lack of a better term, you're very much like a machine being told what to do and how to do it with very little creative freedom. Some creative freedom, 
but very little. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. For most people, it's actually a luxury. You need that direction, but you don't have all of that responsibility of worrying about designing the overall product from scratch or the growth of the company, but simply solving the tasks that are given to you. But if you're someone who's getting into mechanical engineering because you wanted to create your own products and make your ideas a reality without anyone telling you what to do, then it gets a little bit iffy there. Just know that if you work for a company as a mechanical engineer, you won't have a say in most things that you do and every single bit of work that you do belongs to the company. So what does an actual day in the life of a mechanical engineer look like? Well, this will vary from company to company, team to team, and person to person. But the overall structure is typically the same. On the job, unlike software engineers who primarily code, mechanical engineers do a multitude of tasks, including designing parts, analyzing and optimizing designs, and testing parts and products. This is what I call the technical work of a mechanical engineer. The amount of technical work that is expected of you is around four to six hours in a typical eight hour day. You will almost always never do technical work for eight hours straight because you have stand-up meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, design reviews, you have breaks, you have that one random coworker who comes over to your desk to talk to you, you have a 3D printer that breaks down during a middle of an important print, and you have to spend the next two days troubleshooting and fixing it. All of this ties into your eight hour day. So don't go in expecting that you'll be designing and CAD for eight hours a day. You'll be spending time doing non-technical work, whether it's attending a scheduled meeting that you know about in advance or hopping onto a unplanned last minute meeting. Oftentimes you'll find that the technical work will come with a handful of non-technical work and it's unavoidable. For example, in the early stages of the product development process, you will be designing a bunch of parts to build prototypes and proof of concept so that you can test different designs and determine an optimal one. These parts will likely be fabricated using CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal forming, and even injection molding. So the million dollar question is, who are you going to ask to make these parts for you? Speaking from personal experience, I can attest that finding the right manufacturer or machine shop, especially when you need quality affordable parts fast is nearly impossible and extremely time consuming. To make matters worse, engineering projects often face very tight deadlines and you could very well miss a deadline because you spent days looking for a machine shop to make your part. Either their lead times were way too long, the prices they quoted exceeded your budget, or they straight up don't have the capabilities to make your parts. Well, luckily for you, you won't ever have to deal with any of these problems after trying out my favorite service, Jiga.io, who is very kindly sponsoring this part of the video. Jiga is a unique custom parts manufacturing platform that connects you with a vast network of vetted suppliers, allowing you to directly communicate your requirements to them. This means you get parts faster, cheaper, and made exactly the way you want. With Jiga, you get to build relationship with suppliers, which not only makes the process more reliable, but also simple simplifies even the most intricate projects. Whether you need prototype or production parts, Jiga can do it all with its CNC machining, sheet metal, 3D printing, and plastic injection molding capabilities. Their platform is insanely user-friendly. All you need to do is upload your parts and Jiga will provide a quote within hours from multiple suppliers, allowing you to compare prices and lead times to get the best deal possible. What's even better is Jiga's service is fully transparent. You can directly communicate with the supplier for DFM feedback on Jiga's website and add notes to the 3D models to let them know your requirements. Recently, I needed a last minute custom part made for a personal project. I simply uploaded my CAD files to Jiga and literally within minutes, I got quotes from three different suppliers and received the parts in under a week. Jiga is also trusted by top tier companies like Google, NASA, and Flex, so you can be sure the quality and on-time delivery of your parts are guaranteed. So if you're looking to simplify and streamline your manufacturing sourcing and get parts much faster, definitely check out Jiga.io through the link in the description below. Now, so far we've mentioned that the typical workday of a mechanical engineer is 
eight hours. However, you should expect to work overtime some days without any extra pay if you're a salaried employee and not paid by the hour for multiple reasons. The first reason could simply be that you aren't feeling your best this week or you're dealing with some personal issues and your efficiency is just super low so you fall behind on your work. Or the part that you're trying to design includes many complicated surfaces that require you to learn how to model them on the spot. Or your body boss launches a surprise attack on you and tells you that a new feature that management requested 10 seconds ago needs to be implemented into the design by tomorrow. You probably get the point. You'll need to be flexible and adapt to sudden changes to stay level-headed when these things happen at work. Some tasks are also more mentally draining or tedious than others, so it will be hard to do six hours of technical work straight. So this is where gauging the level of difficulty of your work and prioritizing tasks beforehand will be especially important when it comes to making the most out of your day. As a mechanical engineer, you will without question attend all kinds of meetings. The first is a stand-up meeting, which can occur daily or weekly within your own team, that is the mechanical engineering team, or with members of a cross-functional team on a specific project led by the project manager. This meeting usually runs between 30 minutes to an hour long, where you talk about what you did since the last time you met with team members. The idea behind stand-ups is to create transparency, identify roadblocks, make sure everyone is on the same page, and enforce accountability. Now, when you accomplish everything that you set out to do the day before, your confidence is through the roof, you feel like a genius, and you just want to tell everyone what you accomplished in that stand-up and you love it. But there's a flip side to this coin. If you spent the entire day or week working on the design of let's just say eight parts for a sub-assembly and figuring out how they would be held together, and maybe you still haven't figured it out, well then you just feel bad. Bad. No, bad doesn't even begin to describe it. You begin maybe to get a little bit anxious. You're very stressed out. You feel incompetent. You're the mechanical engineer getting paid 100 grand or more to do a particular job. And you spent days trying to do this particular task and you still haven't completed it yet because it's not like a school project or assignment that you can just BS or put in the hours and do well. It's like you have to present something in front of the entire class that you know you didn't do and the entire class knows you failed. But at work, you're not only worried about what your classmates think of you or what your teacher thinks of you or your grade, but the stability of your job, your livelihood. I mean, you tried your best, but you just couldn't get the job done. On top of all that, your coworkers will be people from all walks of life, backgrounds, ethnicities, age groups, and your relationships with them will generally be more complicated than with your classmates. Some can be nice and some can be toxic. You won't be liked by everyone and that's okay. Again, this is just what I observed and experienced. You might experience something completely different. I can tell you about my experience and mishaps all I want. But at the end of the day, many things can't be learned from other people's mistakes. Oftentimes, you have to make the mistake, or in this instance, you have to experience everything yourself to understand what it actually feels like. And maybe you thrive in those situations, maybe you hate those situations, but you'll never know until you're in it. You'll also have one-on-one -on -one meetings with your boss, who's very likely the engineering manager or lead engineer, depending on your company's organizational structure. The main objective of this more casual meeting is to let him or her know what you accomplished since the last meeting, what you will be up to for the upcoming week, provide any updates and issues you might be facing, and chit chat. Then there's large-scale department meetings and quarterly project update meetings that involve involve everyone from multiple departments, including engineers and managers, to VPs and members of the C-suite. You have to present design updates, prepare a slide deck in advance, and 
practice. Generally, these high stake meetings are more intense and what you say exactly matters a lot to ensure your presentation is effective and well received. You should also anticipate questions that senior executives might ask and have data and explanations ready as a backup. As a mechanical engineer, you will also attend and lead design reviews. Design reviews usually involve engineers and engineering managers from various disciplines, whether mechanical, electrical, software, manufacturing, quality, and or optical. These reviews cover the entire product design, focusing on the integration of all components, ensuring that the design meets the project requirements, specifications, and timeline. These discussions often include detailed technical evaluations, risk assessment, cost analysis, manufacturability, and compliance with industry standards. The atmosphere is usually intense and contentious at times, but I guess it's all for a good cause, and that is to make the overall design better. Finally, the last type of quote unquote meeting and my least favorite is the performance review. Unfortunately, if you're working in a company, your performance will be evaluated and rated once a year based on a rating system established by your company's HR team. The overall rating will factor into the raise and potentially the bonus that you get for the next fiscal year. In my opinion, the cons outweigh the pros for performance reviews because one one, they're very time consuming for both managers and their direct reports. So many times both parties just want to get it off their plate as soon as possible so they can get back to working on their other tasks. The second reason is performance reviews are easily influenced by personal biases. And let's be honest, we all like to give ourselves a high rating for our hard work. However, it doesn't work like that. And both you and your manager need to come to a consensus for your ratings based on your performance for each individual project you are on and all the different categories before it gets submitted to the VP and HR for final approval. And this brings us to the third reason why I don't like performance-based reviews. Each manager is different. The variability in how different managers conduct performance reviews can lead to inconsistencies, making it difficult to ensure fairness across the organization. Performance reviews can also induce anxiety and stress and employees because your every move is quote unquote being graded and when a project doesn't meet deadlines even though it's not necessarily your fault you will be punished which sucks a lot but is understandable since you win as a team and lose as a team but I get it. Companies need to have a formal process for employees to receive feedback on their work, helping them to understand their strengths and areas of improvement. But maybe what I'm trying to get at is performance reviews shouldn't be so dependent on the employee's past performance, but rather future potential and foster a positive culture by not only recognizing and rewarding results, but also effort, teamwork, and adherence to company values. And these are all the points I wanted to discuss in today's video, not to dissuade anyone from becoming a mechanical engineer, but to show you some of the realities that other videos fail to show. On the outside, you see them working on the computer with a smile. You see the cool products that they designed, but you never see what goes on in the meetings. You never see what goes on in their heads when they're actually doing this work and the difficulty of it. I hope you can take something away from this video, but more so, I hope you can give it a little bit more thought into the potential career path you're looking at based on the reality of it and not how it's portrayed. Let me know about your experience as a mechanical engineer, which could be similar or the complete opposite of what I described in this video. I can't really speak from anybody else's point of view, so I would love to hear some of your experiences as a mechanical engineer, what you agree with, what you don't agree with down in the comments section below. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about what my first six months were like as a mechanical engineer. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.